Hey guys, it's Karina with Karina Loves to Plan. Welcome back to my channel. So here I am back with a different type of video than I normally do. So there you see in front of you my Pelican M400 in the white tortoise, as well as my Pelican M605 in the green and white stripes. What am I doing with these two pens today? Basically, I got this idea from Simona, as well as the other lovely people in her discord group and uh, basically I realized I had never done a video like this because by the time I could get to do a video like this I've already sold the pen <laughs> so I really wanted to do a I guess year year on review year later update for these pens just because one uh, the collector and user that I am now I believe is different from where I was when I first purchased these pens and two I have also acquired and tried many more pens in the last year which has definitely changed my opinion on how these two pens will fit into my collection so I wanted to go over things like is are these pens good for long writing sessions are they better with wet or dry inks do they have a lot of feedback are they smooth and you know how does especially with these pens because they are white and they have the white grip sections do they stain easily is it comfortable in the hand are they good for everyday carry or best left at the desk or how are they with shimmer inks or sheening inks and what preferred paper to write on with so how do i want to do this i do want to answer each of those questions but for each pen so let's first do the pelican m400 this pen was my first grail pen and when I bought it it was at that time the most expensive pen that I had ever purchased and it was so so beautiful and at that time really was just everything that I had expected it to be it was a beautiful pen it wrote really well and it just felt like very very good value well I say good value, but I did get it at a very good price from Cult Pens. And there were so many people who had been talking about this pen and I really wanted to own one. And I felt like I had achieved something by owning this pen. Not to say that you have to have achieved anything in order to own any type of fountain pen. This was just me personally, where I felt like I had reached a certain point in my fountain pen journey to be able to own this pen. But basically, with this particular pen and what I know now, is this good for long writing sessions? Now for me to write with it, I write with it posted. And in terms of its size, the size that it is similar to is um, the Sailor Pro Gear Slim uh, in terms of its length as well as the width of the overall body of the pen. And that for me, unfortunately, is just a bit too small. So for me, it is not good for long writing sessions because this is not comfortable for my hand. I can probably manage a page with this and then my hand starts to get sore and start to cramp up. Is this better with wet or dry inks? Pelican nibs are wetter than regular inks or regular nibs, but also they're slightly broader. So an extra fine nib on any regular pen, be it um, Japanese or Western, this is actually um, I feel like it would be a fine even in a Western nib. So they are slightly broader, but they are also very wet and great flowing. In terms of feedback or smoothness, one of the things that shocked me about this one was that it wasn't as smooth as what I had experienced with, for example, a Pilot Vanishing Point nib. This does have feedback. It is smooth, but it's not buttery smooth like a Pilot Vanishing Point. It does have that feedback. However, over time, I realized that it wasn't as smooth as I would like it to be. So I ended up actually having this tuned and smoothed by Perk Spear at the San Francisco Pen Show. And now it's basically where I like it in terms of that feedback smoothness spectrum. So does the grip section or barrel stain easily? There are a couple of spots there where... That could be like just ink or dust, but with this pen, there have been people that said that the barrel does stain easily. I haven't found that to be too much. Like if you could see there, there isn't really any staining, 
but I also have pen flush where I try to get all of those little stains out. And I think if you even have something like a microsonic cleaner, you could probably get those little bits out as well. So it's not too, too bad in terms of staining, but then I haven't used really uh, saturated dark inks in this particular pen. And is it comfortable in the hand? Like I said, this pen is just that bit too small for me. So after about writing half a page to a page, it is not comfortable for me personally. I do prefer larger pens. And what I've learned over this year is that the perfect size of pen for me is probably the Estherbrook S3 or the M800 in terms of the width of the body and the length of the overall pen. Is this good for everyday carry or best left at the desk? I feel like that's a matter of personal opinion. I am the type of person who wants to use my pens. I mean, I work from home, so it's not like I take my pens out everywhere with me. Um, but I, if you work in a place where you feel like you wouldn't feel safe having your pens out, then I don't think this is one that you would take with you as an everyday carry. Um, but since I work from home, I... I'm, I'm in the place where everything is my everyday carry because I do work from home. Um, is it okay with shimmer ink? Yes, absolutely. In during 30 inks, 30 days, I actually used Diamine uh, Ink Vent Olive Swirl in this. And the combination of the two was fantastic. Really, really fun to use. So you see there. You, you could see a bit of the shimmer there, but it was such a fun combination having these two. So I really enjoyed having shimmer inks in this particular pen because it didn't clog, it didn't dry up. It was just really, it did really well with shimmer inks. And I've used it with a couple of sheening inks. And it's actually not too bad. I'm more afraid of it staining the inside of the barrel with inks that are too dark and too saturated like that. And then the preferred paper to write with, I've written on Rhodia paper as well as Tamoya River paper. And to be honest, both are actually really good with this particular pen. So overall, my year end, my year end, my year later review, almost two years later review of this particular pen is that it is a very high quality pen. I think it's one of these pens that will last you, you know, a very, very long time. And I still have very, very good reviews of this pen. But for me personally, and what I've learned about my preferences, this pen is just that bit too small for me. If you like the size of the Sailor Pro Gear Slim, this pen is for you. So uh, I guess overall, Still a very, very good pen, just not for me size-wise. Then we have the Pelican M605 in the green and white stripes. And when I purchased this, one of the things that, well, really two things. I purchased this from Dan of the nibsmith.com and it was, I think, at 40% off. And it also included a nib grind for free. So I was able to get the pen plus the nib grind at a really, really good price. And it was one of the first nib grinds that I ever had. And I had a fine cursive smooth italic on this. So a cursive smooth italic is like a stub nib, but a little bit sharper on the corners. So it just feels just that much slicier. And I love this nib. This nib is fantastic because it's such a smooth writing experience, but then you get a little bit of sliciness because of that cursive smooth italic. So is it good for long writing sessions? For me personally, I can write maybe a page and a page and a half with this in an A5 and then start to feel like it's not very comfortable. So I don't know what a long writing session is for you, but more than a page and a half and I start to get a little bit of pain with this pen. Is it better with wet or dry inks? It's actually good with both because like I said, Pelican nibs are generally wetter and also generally slightly broader than your regular nibs. So this works really well with um, both wet and dry inks. And actually with dry inks, it helps to bring out a little bit more of the flow in, in that ink because the flow of the nib is so good. Feedback or smooth? This does have feedback. It's not, you know, buttery smooth like a um, Pilot Vanishing Point or anything like that, but it is smooth. It's not scratchy, even with that cursive smooth italic. That took me a little bit of time to get used to, but now it's such a great writing experience. And 
You might have to hold your pen at a specific angle, but after a while, it's something that I got used to and I just love the feel of that Cursive Smooth Italic. Does the grip section or barrel stain easily? Because it is white, yes, it certainly can stain easily, but that's why I would stay away from inks that are quite dark. Um, but otherwise, like you can see here, I've had this pen for over a year and there isn't really a lot of staining there. But again, like I said, with the M400, I do have pen flush to help get some of that out. But I also think a microsonic cleaner or one of those sonic cleaners could really help with that as well. And then in terms of the comfort in the hand. So this pen, I could use posted or unposted and it would be comfortable. However, like I said, now that I do own an M800, the comfort level in the M600 or the M605 model just doesn't live up to the comfort level that I have in the M800. And that's partially why I wanted to do this review because my tastes and my preferences change over time based on the pens that I've acquired, pens that I've tried. So now that I have tried pens like the Estabrook SD and the Pelican M800, I am finding that the M605 is not as comfortable as I thought it would be when I first got it. And so, you know, for, for me personally, I do have small hands, funny enough, but I do prefer larger pens to be more comfortable. Uh, is this good for everyday carry or best left at the desk? Again, like I said, with my Pelican M400, I don't go anywhere because I work from home. Um, but I think, I know I've traveled with these pens as well and they're good to travel with, but to take them to a workplace every day, I feel like I would be scared to lose these. Um, but for me, I, I would rather use my pens and just leave them at home if I worked away from home. Uh, are these okay with shimmer inks? Yes, and okay with sheening inks as well. These nibs handle, and the feeds as well, handle the shimmer and sheen really, really well. So that is a plus for, for those as well. And then preferred paper to write on. Again, I've written with on Rhodia paper and the Tamoy River paper. I actually prefer the Tamoy River paper, especially with the Slicier Fine Cursive Smooth Italic. But that's just me. I think Overall, I, I prefer Tamoy River paper anyway in general. So with that said, my year later review of the <laughs> Pelican M605 in the green white stripes, I kind of, you know, I, I still love it. I kind of wish maybe I had a, um, a different color saying that I did have the M600 in the black tortoise, which I've already sold. Yeah, <laughs> um, but now that I've had it for a year, knowing that I now have tried the M800 and the Estabrook SD and those fit my hand so perfectly and so comfortably, the M600 or the M605 model, while still, again, very good quality, lovely build, great nib, great feed, great ink capacity, a pen that I would highly recommend because of its size and because of my personal preferences, it's just not for me. So, you know, a year later, I still think these two are fantastic pens. And if you are wanting to try a Pelican, I highly recommend these. But if you are like me and you prefer slightly bigger pens like the Estabrook SD, I would recommend not going out and buying an M800 because that is an investment, but at least trying an M800 to see the size rather than buying all the, the sizes below and then learning that they, they might just be too small for your hand. So at the end of the day, <laughs> I have taken all of the pens that I've acquired and all the experiences I've had in this last year and a bit since acquiring these pens. And would I purchase these pens again? If, you know, knowing everything I know now, probably not. I probably would not purchase these pens again. Um, not because they're not good pens, but because I prefer the larger pens for the comfort level in my hand. So that is it for me. That is my one year later review. At the end of this, I may be selling these pens. I may have already sold these pens by the time I've made this video and published it. Um, 
but I hope that this pen or this video gave you some insight into how my opinions have changed or may not have changed um, on a pen based on my own fountain pen journey. If you like this type of video and want to want more videos like this, please let me know in the comments below. Once again, thank you guys so much for watching and have yourselves a great day.